Yes. So we, we go from the sublime to the ridiculous when it comes to animation. Yes. <laughs> because we tried out the show Mashal, Magic and Muscle. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, you, you were telling me about this show, um, uh, last episode of the show last week, and you were saying it was kind of, it was like Harry Potter meets One Punch Man. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does that work? How does that work? <laughs> Uh, so partially this, I, I had read a big chunk of the manga a few years back, but before I losing steam on it. Um, and then the season two opening song has been going around. Uh, it's called Bling, 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 Bong or something, something like that. Yeah. It is quite possibly the most catchy thing you have ever heard. And it should be considered a war crime. And I hope that the uh, Japanese people are someday forced to reckon for this that thing, <laughs> hor horror that they have inflicted upon the rest of the world. <laughs> bling, bang, bing, bing, bang, bing, bing, bang, 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 You the best, you the best. Da, da. <laughs> oh, hopefully we don't get copyright strikes on that. <laughs> yeah, if that, if that gets, I mean, if me badly singing it gets us a copyright strike, then. We live in a dystopia and everything's awful. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, but you know what? Um, Mash also lives in a dystopia, so that would be appropriate, I guess. Uh, yes. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, like I said, I'd, I'd read a chunk of the manga, and we and uh, while we didn't get to season two, um, we've both seen a pretty decent chunk of it now. Yeah. So, Daniel, uh, tell them about the horrible dystopian life that Mash lives. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, so the the world that they live in is full of uh, people. Everybody uses magic. They all have like magical abilities, and the the lines that are on their faces indicate that they have magic. Um, but uh, Mash, who is of course the, the the one in the middle, lower lower down there, um, he does not have magic, uh, and uh, to and of course, uh, anybody who doesn't isn't born with magic. Well, um, bad things happen to them. Right. And, they're uh, they're basically uh, not considered human beings and are eliminated to uh, to basically uh, keep the gene pool genie. Yeah, yes. Um, and uh, as a, as a baby, as an infant, he was uh, adopted by uh, an uh, old guy. Who, well. He was middle aged at the time, and now he's old. Um, and they live out in the woods in a little uh, house. And uh, Mash, um, to to compensate for his not having magic, um, he just weight trains and and fight trains and you know just <laughs> and eats cream puffs and eat and eats cream puffs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh, so it's the world of cross Ange. Oh, not quite. <laughs> not quite as um, um, horrific. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Except for that, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so one day, Mash, who is just—he's kind of a simpleton. Yeah, yes, <laughs> a very sheltered simpleton. Uh, he decides to go into town to get these special cream puffs. And you see how ridiculously strong he is because. Uh, he doesn't understand pushing and pulling the door. Like, I forget. Do you have to push or pull? I guess I'll try push. <laughs> he breaks the door off the hand. <laughs> He's like, oh, sorry, Dad. I'll fix it. He's just putting it in. You're it's trying to put it up. <laughs> 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 try, try. He, he would fail that test where you try to put the right shape into the right hole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he goes into town, and he gives the guy the coins to pay for his cream puffs. No. And he is accidentally squeal. Oh, oh, sorry, I always squeeze these things too hard. Let me fix it. He yeah, proceeds yeah. to unbend. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, but uh, yeah, and then as he's in town, uh, his he's wearing a hood, which is obscuring his face. But then the wind blows it off, and then everybody sees that he doesn't have a, a line on his face, so he doesn't have any magic. <laughs> and so the police come after him, uh, and really cruel police like the, the police officer is shown torturing somebody and he's only interrupted when he finds that there's a magicless freak in town uh, yeah <laughs> and then the resolution is very strange because mash shows up to save his father from these people using his sheer raw physical strength to overcome their magic <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the the villain 
must roll a 20 on his persuasion check because he, he basically goes, well, look, uh, you know, now that the police know that you're, if everybody knows that you don't have magic, they'll never stop coming for you. You'll never have a moment of peace, but I know a way you can get in. Uh, if, if you uh, go to this magic school and you become the, the scholar champion or whatever they call it for the year, uh, yeah. you'll be so powerful that no one will be able to touch you. And if you let me be your corrupt per person, I'll, <laughs> I'll help you out, get into the school and everything. It's like, <laughs> yeah. This seems like an awful deal for MASH, but <laughs> it's basically the only way to get the fuzz off his back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he shows up and, and basically the, uh, basically Hogwarts, uh, I think it's, it's called Easton. I think Easton Academy is the name of that, it. That sounds right. Yeah, I, I think they kind of named it after uh, Eaton uh, Academy, which is a very prestigious private school in England. Uh, that's where uh, that's where William and Harry, the the princes, that's where they went to school. Okay, yeah. so, so I'm assuming they went through the same exact uh, tests to get in, like you know, having to get through a hedgerow maze with living sphinxes that are trying to attack you and yeah yeah <laughs> and mash just brute forcing his way through literally everything like it it's great like yeah he has a test where it's like oh you have to uh use your magic to unscramble the letters on the page and the letters are constantly moving around <laughs> basically just looks down yeah he's like stop <laughs> moving <laughs> i said stop moving and get in the right order and then yeah. he, he scares the magical letters into position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and, uh, and of course, when he's going through the hedge maze, that's when he meets uh, Lemon, who's the the girl. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the best way to describe the supporting cast in this show. Okay, so this is already a weird Harry Potter silly parody with weirdly grim elements to the world. Yeah. Um, but like the side characters from what I've read of the manga, it's basically like the author making fun of you for reading the same tropes in Shonen Jump over and over and over again. Because yeah. <laughs> Lemon is just like the most basic archetype for a unwanted romantic interest I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and then uh, you got the uh, then you had the the bully character who shows up in the second episode, who, so, who looks so clearly uh, Draco. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the te uh, older teenage version of Draco Malfoy. <laughs> and and Mash is just so like agreeable that he doesn't realize he's being bullied for a while because what? what how does he know? Uh, yeah, he, he just thinks this is ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then he he stands up to the to Draco, and he and then uh, he slams his head into the ground, and he says, "Oh, I think I screwed up." <laughs> oh yeah, I screwed up. And then the vice principal shows up, and because the the vice principal and the and the the bully kid are like you know like friends, or they know each other, and then so he just buries them. <laughs> buries him in the floor <laughs> yeah and ninja brings up a good point it sounds like the world if the world of harry potter but with, with an isekai protagonist whose special skill set that is ordinary that breaks the world magical system yeah because he basically brute yeah. forces his way into pretending to have magic it, right yeah <laughs> yeah he's uh, i can't remember was it the third episode with the where he's do they're doing basically do playing quidditch Yes, like he, yeah, like, well, they start they start the game at the end of the third episode. Oh, that's third. Okay, was the end. Uh, okay. But like, you know, they, they have broom training, and so you, you have to like hold out your hand and summon your broom to your hand. Yeah, <laughs> and he can't do it. But what he does is he stomps the ground so hard that the broom just shoots straight up into his hand. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, when it's time for him to pretend to fly. Uh, he, I forget, did he, he didn't just leap, like he threw the broom ahead of him, then accelerated and jumped on top of the broom. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and thus broke the records for broom flying in one, yeah. one go. Yeah. <laughs> Which, um, so I, I watched a power scaling video for a character from Dragon Ball, the original one called General Tao, who does something similar, where he would break off an enormous pillar, throw it, and ride it around. Uh. <laughs> um, and uh, the the power scalers claim that 
to do that, he would have to be able to move at Mach 20 to catch up with the pillar once he threw it at the rate he was throwing it. Yeah. <laughs> so it gives you an idea of just how broken Mash is to pull off the same trick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so that's basically the gag of the show is like it's a it's a piss take on shonen manga tropes <laughs> with a with a layer of Harry Potter parody and some surprisingly hard battles at, and cool battles at certain points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, it, it, I I I really like stuff like this. That's that is very like tongue in cheek, like like you're in on the game. Like the audience is in on the gag. Like okay, yeah, we know what you're doing. We know what's going on, and but we we still enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a it takes a deft hand to pull it off. Um, mm -hmm. That's your other things. Uh, so I forget his name, but did you? Daniel, did you did the show get to so I read more of the manga, you watched more of the show. Did they get to that redheaded character and the stuff that you watched? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What, is it just me or is he basically just off brand Naruto? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Kroger brand Naruto. Yeah. And the and the, the, the guy with the 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 blue hair. Mm -hmm. Uh he yeah, he has a, 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 a he's major siscon. Oh, that's him. Okay, and he yeah. has uh, he has two marks, so he's extra magic. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Overall, Mashal is a good silly ride. I, I would say that it's better as an anime than as a manga because you get the um, you get Mash's uh, not you know, emotionless deadpan delivery on everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I knew you were cool. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a recommend. It's it's on over at Crunchyroll. Yes. Yeah. If you're interested in the manga, it's available on uh, their. It's available on Viz's uh, Shonen Jump app too. All right. All right. Cool.